Welcome back to the Horseman Podcast, a show where we explore our passions, interesting topics with a free-flowing structure. This week, we are excited to bring to you our movies, what we enjoy about them and what we love about them. So stay tuned and enjoy our uh, creative genius minds talking about the movies that we once loved as a kid and love now. I'm not a genius. I want to disclose that. (laughs) (laughs) But I am. A wizard. Did we talk about movies last season? We did talk about movies this last season. We talked about a couple different films. Um, where I, I think you know movies hit us um, pretty regularly. So I think this was a topic that you and I decided. Uh, this one we wanted to bring back. Yeah. For this season as well too. I think with movies, it's such a huge like topic circle. Um, there's. There's so much to discuss. Yeah. You, it, it never gets boring. It, no, it never gets boring because you can just talk about because there's so many movies out there. Yeah. And what's cr- what's like what I I what I enjoy about movies is the whole like okay you're gonna sit down you're gonna take two and a half hours out of your day you're gonna sit down and you're gonna watch a movie that makes you happy mm-hmm. or that interests you and stuff like that so I would like, what is like if you could name it like your what's your like your favorite movie of like all time. We talked about this last season. I'm going to go to some of the most recent movies that I've seen. Okay. Um, so the, one of the most interesting movies that I, I have seen as of lately, lately has been an HBO documentary um, recommended to me by a good friend, and it's called Woodstock 99. Okay. Have you? Are you familiar with Woodstock? I don't have, I don't have HBO. So I'm familiar with Wait, Woodstock okay. a little bit. All right, so let's give some context to for people who don't yeah. know what Woodstock is. So Woodstock was a uh, film, not film. Uh, it was a music festival that happened back in the 1960s, yep. where a lot of people did a bunch of drugs and there was a lot of cool bands there. Yeah, you know, and everybody's like, "Whoa, Woodstock!" Yeah. Um, well, like, if you could imagine it, just it's just a bunch of hippies going to listen to music. That's basically yeah, it. and doing drugs. Yeah. Um, what happened in Woodstock 99, it was 30 years later, same promoters and everything, um, and they wanted to recreate that vibe, um, with, you know, parents and kids of the 90s. Mm -hmm. However, it went drastically wrong. (laughs) Oh, boy. It was, it was a complete, can I curse on this show? Yes, we've been doing it like we've been doing it, yes. It was a, it was, it was a complete shit show. <laughs> um, a lot of things went wrong um, during this um, time period because I'm going like kind of paraphrase what was going on in the 90s. So at that time, you know, you had like a bunch of grunge bands, but also as well too, you had like a lot of built up um, aggression with, you know, the youth because they didn't really have an outlet to be able to like ah (laughs) you know like kind of let it all out so it was all pent up and throughout this music festival it just kept getting crazier and crazier and crazier to the point where it's just like they were destroying the set you know they were setting things on fire taking down the peace wall you know there was not enough water four dollars for a bottle of water back in 1999 that's absolutely insane you know not enough porta potties you know people are just partying like heck um and there was just like a bunch of um very a lot of uh social was it socially unacceptable behavior yeah uh going on you know between like men and women and just like yeah mm-hmm. for reference four dollars in 1999 is about 664 today yeah, so that's expensive that, for a bottle of water. Yeah, that's that's pretty expensive, <laughs> you know. And you're Good here, Lord. you're here for this three day festival, and what sucked is, you know, you're just watching this documentary, right? And the promoters, they're standing behind their festival, and like as you're watching this whole documentary, it's like it's a complete shit show. There, there is no one around to stop these people, you know. It's just like they don't really have security guards. You know, the, they're on a military base, um, which is really ironic, right? You're trying to throw this peace and lovey-dovey, you know, kind of film festival, and then you have, like, acts from, like, Limp Biscuit, you know, <laughs> Korn, Metallica, where it's just like, 
not necessarily aggressive, but it's just like, this is kind of like complete opposite. Yeah. I would not, Kid Rock, you know, DMX, like, you, I wouldn't ask these people, it's just like, I, I would be like, oh man, you know, who's a little bit more, you know, like kind of chiller, you know, yeah. during that time period. And yeah, and it was just a crazy vibe. Yeah, that's that, yeah, that's insane. Like, um, cause I, I recently looked up the Woodstock 1999 one and mm-hmm. like, um, I was trying to like read about it cause like, I guess it popped up on like a conversation between me and somebody else and I was like, what is like, it, there was a Woodstock in 99? I was like, what? Mm-hmm. So I looked at this, I was like, holy shit. I was like, oh, well, this is not what the promoters had in mind for a Woodstock like festival. And I, oh, man, I just, there are some there are some documentaries that I've watched where I'm just like, how the hell did this even ha- like how did this even get allowed to happen? That was like my one question with like the with, with so, this one. Well, yeah, and the biggest thing is I think after a while it was just like you're in too deep. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to take this to a serious note real quick. Do you mind? Yeah, of course. All right. Yeah, and with the recent tragic events, what happened at you know like the Astro World concert is I. Uh, yeah. Are you familiar? I think so. You know what happened down there in Texas? Oh um, yes, I, uh, yeah. With that yep. concert, I think um, we we had a lot to learn from Woodstock because a lot of things went wrong. You know, people died. You know, and, and it was very sad. And seeing how you know that uh, this is my own opinion, um, Astro World was kind of in the same effect mm. as well too. It's just like. It kind of it irritates me because there are so many people now where it's just like they had the ability to shut it down, yeah. And we didn't, and a lot of tragic lives were lost. You know, even though it was like nine people and a lot were injured, but dude, like nine is still too much because remember, it's just like the reason why we go see an artist because it's just like it brings us joy. It's just like this is like oh man, it's not every day you get to hear live music. It's such a great community event. And to see, you know, the artists, you know, the, like, promoters, they didn't do anything about it once they broke down mm. the wall. It's just like, dude, they should have, plug- <laughs> like, pulled the plug. It's just like, sorry, man, this is not how we um, can condone ourselves here, you know? It's just like, I know we have a bunch of pent-up energy, but we shouldn't take it out on other people, you yeah. know? I, oh, I'm just sad. Sorry, we have some technical, technical difficulties. difficulties going on here. Um, yeah, I, that's... And just to bring it on the lighter note, it's just like now, I know like a lot, he's done a lot of nice things for these families. It just shouldn't have happened in the first place because we had events like Woodstock 99, you know, mm. uh, to showcase that. I hope in the future that if any of you guys have decided to become you know like a big promoter or whatever just make the safe decision even though it sucks like you're going to have to give back money and refunds i think that is the better route than having people you know be hurt in the long run yeah like um i'll turn around on a more uh, humorous note i think uh, one of the movies that i saw recently i've been watching a lot of parodies recently you're watching and, uh, parody movies yeah uh i kind of i kind of got into a little bit oh man and one of the first ones i watched um uh, I enjoyed this movie a lot. Uh, have you seen the film um, Meet the Spartans? Oh shit! <laughs> okay, oh, God. so my so <laughs> I was watching it and I was just like I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm like oh my god! I was like this is the funniest thing I've I ever seen. I asked my mom to take me to that movie <laughs> in theaters and she did. I was like maybe 13 at yeah. the time. Oh my god! And the, the crap they've been able to put in the movie, like, all right. So the ending of the movie, I really like. With uh, with the uh, they're all what's just. The, what's the song at the end? Um, what what is it? Uh, I can think of it right now. Hold up. Like uh, so, they had. Uh, well, he's thinking. Of oh no! No, I I will survive. Well, yeah, that one. I will survive. <laughs> So when they when they did this, I was like, I, the first idea, I was like, oh no, this is gonna go terrible. I should have changed and, that stupid lock. Yeah, something I like that. Should have made you leave your key. As soon as they got into like the hardest song, I was like, okay, this song actually slaps. It this does song, slap. This song is like, whoa, this actually works. And I got I, I got into the movie, 
I'm sitting there watching them. I was like, what is going on? I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Because it's been a while since I've seen the actual movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I was watching back and I was like, huh. Yeah, there, there's actually, you know, you can tell that it's a, that you can tell that they've they changed since because obviously it's a parody film. But oh, I'm yeah. just like, I'm like, I'm watching this film like, you have got to be kidding me! Like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I honestly, I didn't think I'd like it, but I'm so glad I watched that movie because it's it's one of like my sneaky good ones that I can put. Dude, in that's there. a guilty pleasure movie yeah, right there. That's a great movie. I like, I I've been. I, like my my favorite some of my favorite movies are comedy movies because when I'm sitting down watching movies like I kind of stay away from like the dark crap because I already got a bunch going on a bunch going on in my head I was like I don't need to feed it so I watch a lot of com I lo love watching comedy and uh, we got into I think there was one other parody one I was called um, oh not another teen film have you seen that one I don't think so, so. Uh, not another teen film is like it's a parody it stars Chris Evans. And I want to say, when did it come out? Um, it came out in 2001. And uh, it has Chris Evans as the star quarterback and whatnot. And it's basically about... It's about this... Uh, I want to say... I, th I think she's either 16 or 17. And basically it follows like this young girl around, you know, going through the high school, all the, you know, the, the cliques and the bullying and... You know, you have the star football quarterback, and um, but when I was watching this movie, uh, there were so many. the 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 reason why I like this movie is because it's also another parody movie because they take so many different things from other lines. And actually, at the end of the movie, at the very last scene, you actually see someone from a film called Sixteen Candles, which I don't know if you've seen before. I've never seen. It's a romantic that. comedy. Um, I, I believe it's. I believe it's. Yeah, it's a romantic comedy. But Sixteen Candles is basically about a, a, a girl who's going through her birthday, and her family's completely forgotten her birthday. It's like a terror. It's. It's one of those like, oh my god, that's like the worst one. But it ends in a really good note. But the the um, the girl who plays in Sixteen Candles uh, plays one of the characters in the last scene, and it's kind of funny because Chris Evans is stealing lines from different romantic comedies. <laughs> to play on the on this like seventeen year old girl who's trying to stop from going to France, oh my and God. Uh, it's like it just cuts back to the character who played in Sixteen Candles. He's like, you stole this, you stole that line from this, and he says another line, you stole that line from this, and you stole another. And he walks up, the character from Sixteen Candles walks up to the main character from this movie, and she goes, "Are you gonna fall for this bullshit?" <laughs> and like That's throughout funny. this movie, like you just see the wildest crap in this movie. I mean teen partying and like there's a uh, there's one scene in it where there's a bunch of really awkward young kids one of them's played by john cusack and you can just tell that these guys do not belong in this high school like these are the weird guys who wear like the really goofy outfits and have the the cool spy gear and everything like that but i don't know romantic comedies and parodies have kind of been my movies of choice recently well uh Mine have just been, you know, insane documentaries, and, <laughs> and then that new James Bond movie. Did oh, you go see that? I haven't seen it yet, and I want to see it so bad. Yeah, No Time to Die. Yeah. Billie Eilish does the song. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard the song. I've heard the song. The song's great. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like this uh, film a lot. I know a lot of people kind of give it hate, but I think it's actually a really good James Bond film uh, from, the sim from the technical standpoint. It's just like there's so much twists and turns in that film, and what I also really appreciate, you know, Rami Malek does this, uh, does a really good job. Is he's not your stereotypical Bond villain, um, and what I mean by that is, you know, how these Bond villains are looking for something. Um, what I really like about uh, Rami uh, Malek's portrayal, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you guys, is that. He's kind of like a James Bond character in, in this film too, but in just in a different way. And um, how him and uh, Bond go up against each other, it's just like, you know, before it's just like the other guys were kind of playing games and trying to run around him. But um, Rami Malek's character is just like, it's almost like him and Bond are light switch, you know, they're turning things on and off, you know, with, between each other and seeing like how, you know, it's just like this... It's almost like a ping pong match where it's just like 
it goes all the way to the very end and it's it's a good film yeah i haven't seen it yet i've seen a lot of great things about it um you know one one of my one of my favorite people of all time uh, is my buddy noah he's uh, he and i have known each other since thomas mm-hmm. he is in love with the bond films yeah and when he went to see it he texted me he goes Dude, you gotta see this movie oh, it's yeah. a really good movie and um yeah i've i've uh i've seen a couple i've seen a couple of the james bond films from the recent years and yeah, you know, some yeah, of them Daniel are. Yeah, Craig. Yeah, yeah there's a Daniel, incredible James Bond. He, uh, yeah, he kind of it grew on me a little bit. Like at first part, I was kind of turned off by it, but then after a while, I was like, you know what? These movies are actually like, pretty good movies. So that I started watching a little bit more James Bond ones. So I can't wait to see this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it, and uh, I've, I mean, the soundtrack's fa- fantastic. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And. Um, Shout out to John Barry for making, you know, the original score. Yeah. You know, and then shout out to, you know, like Adele, Billie Eilish, all I, these I other. I like the fact that they've brought in some artists to kind of take over that. Not take over, I but think, add something uh, else. Like have a theme song. Yeah. To, I think that is such a cool thing, you know, with each James Bond movie. You yep. don't necessarily get with other films. Other films, I feel like you get soundtracks, but this is like, this is the song of the film. Yeah. You know, it's just like when Suicide Squad came out. It's just like oh, you God. got you got purple Lamborghini with Skrillex and Rick Ross. <laughs> and you got uh, what is it? The, um, uh, the uh, Twenty One yeah, Pilots, Pilots with Heathen yep. as well too. That's such a great movie. That's such a great song. Yeah, um, um, it's so interesting to see. But it's just like, but with the Bond films, it's just like this is the song. Wasn't there? Wasn't there like a Suicide Squad two? Yes. Movie that came out. What was the it called? One. Was it Suicide Squad two? No, no, no. There was one. It was like it was just Harley Quinn. It was like something. Oh, Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Still haven't seen that one. It's good. It's good it's, movie. It's fun. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I watched that. That one's a kick-ass film. I think my I think my issue yeah, with like you and McGregor's in it. Really? Yeah. That just piqued my interest a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Yeah, especially like seeing him from his early days in Train Spotting to. Um, and then him being Obi Wan Kenobi. I know when they that stuff that that's dropping on Disney Plus pretty soon. I'm like, oh my god, I yeah, can't wait to watch be, that. And then Hayden Christensen's coming back. Oh, oh that's yeah. going to be fun. Yeah, if you want to talk about like a good okay, so my thing is is like I said, I I love Star Wars movies, yeah. and my favorite like one of my, like my second favorite movie of all time mm-hmm. is Episode Four. Like that is such a classic movie. Oh yeah. Like if you're talking about maybe like the top ten. Top ten classic films of all time. I, I would, I would definitely put that up. Yeah, there. it's got to be in there because, like, if you go back and look, it, it is like you look back. He's like, eh, the graphics aren't as great now, but oh my god, it's yeah. such a classic feeling. Well, the bi- biggest thing is why that movie holds up. It, it's just the story. It is like one of the best hero's journey stories Night ever. Night gets princess. You know, except the it, the night gets princess. Except the night is the bad guy in the in the first start. Oh, oh, I don't care, but it's good. It's good. It's like one of the best hero journey stories. Yeah. You know, same with like Happy Gilmore. Up yeah, there, that the, yeah journey. the ending to Star Wars Four is probably one of the most satisfying endings you can have in a movie. Yeah, they just all get medals, man. Yeah, they just all get medals. <laughs> <laughs> they make a big explosion. Spoiler. And, yeah, yeah. If you guys haven't seen Star Wars Episode Four, go watch Star Wars Episode Four and watch the extended version, please, because that's you There's haven't an extended seen? version. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the extended version, and then you have the 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 one that's the theatrical like, version. The, the theatrical version. But the extended one has like there's a couple. If you if you know the movie inside and out, if you watch the extended version, like if you haven't seen the extended version and you watch it and you already know the prior version pretty well, you're gonna see some stuff in there that you haven't seen before. Um, this like is not like the George Lucas remake where he puts a bunch of shitty CGI in there. No, right? no, no, no. There's okay. uh, there's a scene with Jabba in it. In the extended version, but in the other version when there's not. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it's uh, after Han shoots Greedo oh, when he yeah. goes to the bay to prepare the ship. Oh yeah. They cut out in the oh, in the, yeah. the, the theatrical version. They cut Jabba out the Jabba comes, scene. Yeah. Com- comes out. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I think my I think my issue with like many like a not a nowadays movies is like I don't really get a chance to go and see them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when they come out, people are like, oh, I've seen it. I was like, I haven't seen it yet. And sometimes it's like, you know, let's just wait for it to hit like. Netflix too. I'm like, no, go to a frick. Like, I haven't been to a theater since I saw um, Endgame. What? Oh yeah. my god, man. Yeah, I haven't been to a theater since I saw Endgame. What are no, you no, doing? no, 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 no. Wait, no, 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 no. That's not true. 
Um, Endgame came what? Summer 2019? 2019. Yeah, okay. So I actually, the last time I went to um, the theater was to see that Adam Sandler movie. Uncut um, Gems? Uncut Gems. Yeah. That was the last time I went to theater. Dude, Uncut Dude, that Gems was a good. great movie. That was fantastic. Like, the ending shocked me. I was sitting in a theater, and the ending came out, and I was like, that? That's it? That's how you win the movie? I was like, who the hell saw that one coming? That that one's good. I like um, I like the ending. To there's Uncut another Gems. movie with a bunch of twists and turns. Oh, uh, did you ever see Knives Out? I did see Knives Out. <laughs> They're making a second one. Yeah, they which are. Is exciting. So for those like okay, those who haven't seen it but have seen the trailer, the trailer gives nothing away. Never gives nothing anything away. It gives nothing away. I watched the trailer and then me and my coworker, my my coworker at the time, went and saw it in theaters when it came out. And we're sitting there watching the theater, and both of us had seen the trailer prior beforehand, and we're looking at each other like, uh, what's going on? It keeps you guessing every time. And I think that's what, it, what I like about those movies that release a trailer that gives nothing away. And also as well, too, you know, I don't mean to hate on you, uh, Hollywood trailer editors. I know you're only doing your job, but you could do a better job. Spoken, spoken like a, spoken like a film creator. Yeah. Hey, you guys need to do a better job. You could do a better job. Oh uh, yeah. I understand. You know, marketing is like this works. This works. This works. But also as well too, like if you want to make more money on your movie, don't give it away. Um, and then also you're going to leave like audiences a lot more happy. I know. However, you gotta make your quota or whatever. Blah blah blah. Marketing, marketing. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Um. Yeah. I think I, mean, I got – it's not that I got a problem with Hollywood movies. I think I just got a problem with a lot of production of movies. Like, I, I elaborate. What do you so mean like, by production? So in terms of like how the movie is like shot and stuff like that, I feel like there's – so when, I, when I'm watching like – let me see if I can take like um, a most recent Holly, quote-unquote Hollywood-esque film. Mm-hmm. Ah, man. Like – my thing is, is that I feel like it's there's there's not a whole lot of real stuff anymore. There's a lot of like CGI and green screen and effects. I think that's all right, man. I'm okay with that. The biggest thing that I look at is um, is more the story. If you lack story, all of that other stuff doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, you can't fix a bad movie with CGI. Um, like. I'm going to say a bad movie. It has, it's com- practically all CGI. Everybody loves it, but I actually don't like it. And it's Avatar. Here's a fun fact for you. You've never seen it. What? Josh. <laughs> I've never seen Josh. Avatar. I, 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 know Josh. I, I, I know I should see it, but I haven't seen it yet. I just haven't gotten around to see it yet. Didn't they like release it so they could beat Marvel, or Marvel released Endgame so they could beat Avatar, or something like that? I don't know, but um, <laughs> I remember it was something like Marvel broke like Marvel broke like a crap load of records at the box office, like shattered like bo- like opening box office nights, and then Avatar came out and shattered it, and then Marvel was like, you know what, we're gonna do a better job, and they released Endgame again. And shattered Avatar. Yeah, but that doesn't matter though because Avatar got it first. Yeah, Avatar got it first. It was you had to do it. I'm like, I'm thinking, I was like, Marvel's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, they they just want the bragging rights, but in reality, you don't get the bragging rights. Endgame is not that good. (laughs) It's honestly hot take. Endgame is not that good. (laughs) If you're gonna create a movie, please make it so that we can remember stuff in the film. By the time Endgame like ended, I had no idea how Endgame even started. It was a three-hour-long movie, and I'm not. Even, I'm not even going to see it for like another two, three years. I'm never going to see it again because it, it's one of those movies that just takes. That's I think one of the other issues I have with Hollywood is like keep the movie short. Like I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that. I think it's just like they overcomplicate scenes that don't need to be complicated. Yeah, you know. Um, I think the biggest thing is that a lot of Hollywood films now have too much unnecessary dialogue and not a lot of action. It's more of like talking heads instead of seeing your character actually do something. And in Endgame, there is a lot of like... It, like, I feel like the first hour and a half, you're just listening to people like talk yeah. and set up a lot of things. And then after the snap, 
you know, after the snap to five years, you have um, you have Stark and and Banner and all those other people that mm-hmm. are just gathering in the room and they're talking about what they're gonna do. It's like, can you cut like this scene in half? Because that scene in half, I swear to God, that scene felt like it was fifteen. Yeah, minutes. you just don't need that. Um, that's the biggest thing, and a lot. I think a lot of those. Not to, I'm like, I'm happy for everybody who on the production team, they work, you know, they put out an mm-hmm. incredible movie. I think, you know, when it comes down to it, it's just like they could do better. Um, the biggest thing is that I think we are, we all as a society kind of accept, you know, mediocrity. Mm-hmm. And I thought that Endgame was a very mediocre movie. I don't, I don't think there was anything extraordinary about it other than, you know the last scene where he's just like what 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 did thanos say i'm i am inevitable i'm inevitable and then he's like i'm iron man bam (laughs) that last okay so that scene so i was when i was in the theater watching endgame um the scene where uh captain america picks up the hammer oh bullshit i so i was sitting in there that happened the entire theater went dead silent everyone's like fuck yeah we knew this is gonna happen and everyone went like crazy and i was just sitting back going oh what now and i'm like um all right but the actual ending the total like the whole wrapping up in game with the you know the funeral and then captain america's journey you know yeah. when he goes back in time uh, and then at the end where he's an old man he passed on the shit i was like Oh my God! They ended it in such a really nice way. I think I thought the ending was nice. Yeah. Um, you know, ending. Um, but the biggest thing is like going back to the hammer thing. I think you shouldn't been able to do it going back to Civil Sh- Soldier. I don't think um, Captain America is like as good as everybody thinks. Yeah, I think I think, I think he he's over propped. I, I think he is over uh, propped up. I think you know the biggest. You know, this is my own thing. Is just like you know Tony Stark. I think he's the one that actually sacrificed. I, I've never felt like Iron Man ever made a true sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Um, he was always kind of just like following, you know, kind of like by the book, you know, very by the book. Yeah. You know, he never really went outside of himself. And you can see throughout the whole Avengers journey, you know, Tony's going, finding solutions, you know, this and that, you know, left and right. I feel like he does like a lot of the, yeah, the, a lot lift, of the heavy lifting. Heavy you know, lifting. and people kind of shit on on Iron Man and like Tony Stark, but I'm just like, you do realize that in the end, he actually legitimately he was the one. Yeah, he legitimately cared about everyone else more than himself. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it was like when you were he, lo- he had always seemed like he was the most selfish type, but yeah. in reality, he was always the most giving. Yeah, and it was like it, it's one. He's of those, the one that put in the time. Yeah, he he put he put in the time and Effort. he he yeah. Because I mean, because at this at the start of the whole like that Marvel chapter, right, from two thousand eight yeah. to two thousand and uh, two thousand and nineteen, right? Yeah, you have like you know Iron Man's put out to be like this stuck up character who's enormously rich, who's just an asshole, and at the end of it, you just go like, no, he's the grandfather of all this. Yeah, he is like, and what's kind of funny was um Robert Downey Jr. who plays Iron Man went on Joe Rogan's podcast and Rogan oh, asked wow. him, would you ever come back? Mm-hmm. And he goes, he goes, I don't know. And Rogan's like, cut the bullshit, dude. And he, <laughs> goes, he goes, when you, when you like, you know, the Avengers in trouble and you know, it's 2025 and they're in trouble and you know, turn, turn to and they go back in time to bring back Iron Man. You telling me that if Iron Man doesn't make an appearance in Avengers in 2025, that the entire st- you're going get, to get, get like so many people standing up in theaters applauding like these videos are going to go viral. And Daddy's like, yeah, but like, is it really necessary? And you're like, you're like, God damn it, Daddy, why do you have to be so like, I don't know, I kind of fallen into the robert downey jr romance thing i Mm -hmm. I really like him not just as a person but as an actor Mm -hmm. um and i don't know he really just i think he's tony stark he he is and i think he said it like right there you know right then and there he's just like is it really necessary yeah and i think that is the biggest uh point that we should like make is like is it really necessary and like with his character throughout it, he was always doing, you know, what needed to be done. He didn't do like he never had that attitude. Like, is this necessary to do? 
He just did because it needed to be done. Right. And he was so selfless doing it. Yeah. Even though, like, he had, you know, his ups and downs, but he was always doing it because it needed to be done. And that's that's another thing that I like about Marvel. Mm-hmm. Is that, I believe it was Iron Man 2 when Rhodey fought him in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like, you see that down moment. Marvel oh, yeah. included the down moments because they're like, the down moments are just as important as the up moments. Yes. And I, I think that is such an important moment as well, too, because it's just like you never see that with any of the other characters. No. I think the closest one that you get with that is like Tom Holland. Um, Tom Holland or even Scarlet Witch. Yeah. You, you get to see, you know, those like really down and sad moments, you know. Yeah. And like with Tom Holland, he's just a kid, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's. Oh, my God. Kid, that dude. Kid P- <sighs> Peter Parker, you know, and he's just trying to. Uh, make it happen you know and you see yeah it was like it yeah it and the thing that i liked about it is um i i honestly was i hope that marvel does this in the future movies that they create is i hope they go back on those moments where they show that just because you're a superhero doesn't mean that everything's right yeah and i think they've just done the better job you know at least with the spider-man films you know, compared to some of the other Marvel films. Yeah, they've done a lot of really like good stuff with the Spider-Man ones. Um, the one that came out, not recently, but the one before it. Far from home. Uh, far from home. Yeah. That ending rocked my world. Oh yeah, dude, super sad. Like I was just like, holy crap! Yeah. I was and and yeah. I mean, I don't mean to really get on like this Marvel thing, but like you know, it's it's. I guess I would have to say Marvel has like a pretty big impact on the movie. Um, industry. Movie industry now, and well, I mean, I, I guess do they? Because Disney owns them. <laughs> yeah, um, but but oh, I guess in the start of the 2010 era, Marvel really kind of kicked off that that um, era of like the superhero movies. But they did a, again, like we were saying before, they did a really nice job of including the down moments with the up moments, teaching us kind of a lesson. Yes, I think I think there is a lot to be said with that. Um, do I think those are extravagant movies? Absolutely not. Yeah. I think there's only one or two throughout the whole Marvel universe that are absolutely extraordinary. Like the last uh, two Avengers movies? No. No. <laughs> no. Um, um, I would say, you know, like Iron Man, that's like a definite, like, wow, I, I've definitely learned. And then Spider-Man, you know. Yeah. Both, both of those I've always felt um, personally like, wow, I, I've learned a lot from yeah. – from these films, the other ones I've I've always felt, you know, oh, that's just a very stereotypical, you know, uh, like fun superhero movie or action superhero movie. But the ones that you know that I felt like have always kind of moved, you know, people it, have been like Spider Man and uh, Iron Man because yeah. I I feel like, you know, with Iron Man, I'll I'll wrap this up pretty quick. With Iron Man, it's just like. You doing it on your own, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, with Spider-Man, it's just, like, you doing it with a partner. Yeah. You know, and seeing how both of those characters do it, and it's just like, oh, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I think that's going to do it for us. You kind of got a little idea of, like, how we think about movies and stuff like that. It was was pretty good. I, I, I think this one was a pretty good one. Yeah. So um, we hope you guys enjoyed. As always, this episode comes out on Tuesdays at uh, 5 p.m. on the 42 Or Thursdays. Studios. We all know. We put it on whatever yeah. whatever graphic is on our thing. Yeah, whatever that's, graphic's on our thing, that's that's when it comes that's out. That's when it so. comes out. Um, yeah, thanks you guys so much for joining us. We will catch you guys next week. As always, have a good one. Bye.